Sauce Pomodoro is next. This is our basis of anything that's tomato based. Uh, so we're actually going to use it in the ragu that we're making later. But this is also perfect for just like pasta sauce. If you're making bolognese, say anything that calls for a tomato or tomato sauce, tomato based sauce, this is what we use. It is a mixture of olive oil and blended oil, like canola oil. Again, that is a price thing. The olive oil is about three times as expensive as canola oil is. So that's really what we're doing. Um, th that was about a cup of oil altogether. So a cup of olive oil is just very expensive. It's super expensive to just buy a bottle on its own. So we usually like to cut it with blended oil. And then some garlic cloves. And what we're doing is essentially we're gonna slowly deep fry these garlic until they're really soft um, and golden brown. You'll, you'll definitely start to smell it. And it, it is a very oily sauce. It, it's, it's a weird thing to say, but that's where most of this flavor comes from. Um, a lot of the olive oil and then toasted garlic with some canned tomatoes and then basil. So the frying process of the garlic takes about five to seven minutes. You wanna make sure they're fully cooked and, and so you don't have any raw garlic taste in the sauce. We'll just turn it down slightly so they don't burn. The Di Napoli tomatoes are kind of like my favorite. They're in a bright yellow or mm -hmm. green can. Uh, so those are, those are the ones I always use. I mean, they're organic. They come from California. Uh, they're, the brand itself is, is pretty good. That's what we use in the restaurant, actually. That and then uh, we're actually starting to switch over to a company that's out of Napoli, in fact, that does canned tomatoes. So we use a lot of canned tomatoes, and it's mostly just for this sauce. We wouldn't, we wouldn't ever use fresh tomatoes for this sauce. With the fresh tomatoes, you have to peel. So we get big number 10 cans, which, gosh, I'm trying to think of like what you would buy in a number 10 can at home. So all this garlic is just frying right now. And we're gonna wait until it's soft and then golden brown. You'll start to smell it. Uh, it'll be very toasty. We usually go to Italy about twice a year. Last time we were there was in June. Uh, my fiance and I were there about for three weeks. And then in the middle of that three weeks, uh, our restaurant came out and joined us. So about 12 people from the restaurant all, all together. We kind of explored the region of Piedmont. Went and visited a rice farm. Uh, I don't know how many wineries, but yeah, it was, it's, it's a great time. Uh, this will be our first year not truffle hunting in a few years as well. That's usually one thing we go do in November is uh, truffle hunting. But thought we would focus our focus our time elsewhere this year. Kind of in the middle of an expansion right now. So that's taking up all of our attention. So they're definitely starting to turn like golden brown. We want them to get a little darker and a little softer. So I'm gonna turn this down so they don't burn by the time they're actually fully cooked. And we'll just go a little bit slower. All right. So you can uh, kind of just, just give one a smush, like you can hear that. It's, it's, it's super easy to just like push it down into the pot. Uh, if, if they were still raw, they would be fighting back a little bit. Yeah, that one's, that one still needs a little more time. But they are getting pretty soft. <clears throat> it is okay to get a little more color on these. Yeah, almost there, almost there. A lot of our recipes are a culmination of ways we learn to do things throughout the years. I saw this being done at a restaurant I worked at in New York, and it was kind of like, this part of it was always my favorite to, to watch and see, because I had never seen this done before. Obviously, every time you cook garlic, it's always minced up and diced and stuff. And so to cook and essentially deep fry whole cloves of garlic, uh, it was kind of fascinating for me to see that happen. And then we just took that technique and turned it into our own recipe for tomato sauce. The, the, the hard part is about is what's coming right here though. So essentially you have hot oil, uh, you have a good amount of hot oil right here, and then you have something wet. So if you're not careful, it could, again, a lot of the things we do, fire prone. So, so uh, we just be super careful. I turned the heat off. Um, 
now that the garlic is completely toasted, it's, it's where I want it. I know the garlic cloves are soft. Uh, we're just gonna gently add these tomatoes in here. So they're plum, they're just like whole peeled plum tomatoes. <clears throat> So, tomatoes are in there, the heat is off. We'll just give these a nice stir, let them calm down like that. And then we're good to turn the heat back on. I think one thing we always forget is the, the, the stove has many temperature dials. It's not just off or hot. Um, so absolutely utilize that and turn it down. So a little bit of basil. And then we season it with some chili flake. And then salt. You can always come back and add more if you need. Just give it a nice stir and then we let it simmer slowly for about an hour covered or uncovered oh you can let it go uncovered okay. we're trying to evaporate any, any liquid that was in the tomatoes as well the oil itself won't reduce and thicken up but the entire sauce will if we just like let it, let it simmer for about an hour or so let the uh the liquid from the tomatoes evaporate and kind of condense that flavor so this has been simmering for, for, for an hour or so now. So I like to take out this basil. It was just in there for flavoring during the cooking process. What we'll do is we'll blend it up. I like to use my little stick blender, uh, 100 bucks from Amazon, uh, and it came the next day. Uh, it's a lot cheaper than an actual blender, and then a lot fewer parts as well. Uh, not as heavy. And then another thing is that it doesn't blend up things super smooth which sounds weird, but I want this sauce to have a little texture to it. So I'll blend it up on like medium. And all I'm really doing is I want to get to the point where those tomatoes are just chopped up. We're not going to strain this either. So it'll have kind of pieces of garlic, pieces of tomatoes throughout. Uh, I saw a little tomato left. Just make sure we got it all. And that's that's it. That's our sauce pomodoro. Uh, if we don't blend it enough, the sauce breaks because of how much oil is in it. But then if we blend it up too much, it just gets too smooth. And then uh, yeah, it, it disappears into whatever we want to use it for. So I like to just a, just a good minute or two, uh, make sure that we have yeah, all of the garlic and all of the tomatoes just blended up. Okay, so we're using this as part of the ragu, but you could totally just use this as a sauce on its own, right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we use this, This it's a vegan too. Um, so it's a nice vegan like sauce pomodoro that we'll use for spaghetti, fettuccine, uh, really anything. But then yeah, at the same time, we use it as an ingredient in many of our sauces and braises. Um, so yeah, that is all finished. 